Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining our Happy Strong Kids segment with the Stigma Free Society. Super happy to be here with you today. Hope everyone's having a wonderful and a great start to your week. And just right, if you're new to this segment, if you're new to the uh, Facebook Live events that Stigma Free Society puts on, I just wanted to give you a little background about who Stigma Free Society is. And through this Facebook Live event, I am representing the Stigma Free Society, uh, which is a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce stigma of all kinds with a main focus on mental health. Uh, they promote well, uh, mental wellness education for youth while providing resources for educators, school counselors, and parents and, and guardians. The society's goal is to create awareness of the various stigmas that exist in the world, develop an understanding of the challenges that numerous people face, and encourage people to foster acceptance of themselves and others. To learn more, you can visit their website at stigmafreesociety.com. Another really great resources they have are also on their Facebook page and on their Instagram page. They actually just posted a really awesome activity generator on their Instagram page. So this is a really great tool that teachers and parents can use. It generates different activities that you can use in your classroom or at home that all promote positive mindsets and positive mental wealth uh, for you and your children too. So check them out. They have amazing resources. Um, and I am from an organization called Dolphin Kids Future Ready Leaders too. And we run online programs and we have some resources available on our website as well. So part of our, the Smart Happy Strong Kids segment today, um, we're going to be looking a little bit more into self-reflection and why self-reflection is important for us to practice and how it can really benefit our brain and how it can help us set goals and think about the skills and strengths that we have and the different areas that we would want to continue on into the future. So in true Dolphin Kids fashion, uh, we are going to be starting with a little bit of downtime. And apologies for last week or the couple weeks ago, um, I had some technical issues. Uh, so if I do, for whatever reason, I will come back. Hopefully my Wi-Fi will be okay today, and luckily I have Maddie here to help me out in case anything goes wrong. So hi Maddie, thanks for all your help, really appreciate you. Okay, so we're going to start with a little bit of downtime. We're just going to say um, sitting down. So if you're in a chair, I would love for you to make sure your feet are touching the ground and you are staying grounded and your back is nice and tall. If you're sitting on the floor, like I'm sitting right now, uh, I'm sitting crisscross, but I do wanna just make sure my back is also nice and tall. And what we're going to do is just a few body stretches just to wake up our body. When you activate your body, you activate your brain. So anytime you're doing any physical exercise or movement, you're really um, energizing a lot of different areas of your brain as well. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand and we're gonna just take a big stretch over to the left side and really feel a nice stretch along the right side of your body. You can even wave your hand a little bit around. Awesome. Okay, great. And then we're gonna take our left hand and stretch it over to our right side of our body. Awesome. Don't wanna to pull too hard, make sure there's no injuries, but just try to get a nice stretch. Great job. We're gonna take both hands now and you're gonna just stretch nice up into the sky. Kinda of like you're just getting out of bed, a good morning stretch. Wonderful, and then you're gonna bring your hands gently by your side. The next thing we're gonna do, if you've been writing in school all day or if you're a parent and you've been on the computer a lot, um, another really great one is to focus on your hands and your wrists. So one thing I want you to do is stick out your right hand and you're gonna, gonna turn your wrists in a clockwise motion. Awesome. And then we're gonna go counterclockwise so you can go opposite way. Great. Now we're just gonna gently stretch our hands back and forth. Awesome. This is one area of our body sometimes we don't pay much attention to. I know I need to do a little bit more hands and arm stretches for sure. We're gonna stay with our right arm and we're actually gonna stretch it across our body. Get a good stretch. You can gently bring your head to your left side. So you're looking towards where your hand is pointing. Awesome, you can bring your right arm down. And now we're gonna do the next same thing 
with the left hand. So you can start moving in a clockwise position with your wrists. Awesome, and then we'll go counterclockwise. Great job. And then we're going to take our left hand, bring it across our body for a nice big stretch, and then gently turn your neck towards where your hand is pointing. Wonderful job. Okay, the next step, give yourself a big bear hug. And I want you just to close your eyes, and I want you to think of one thing that you are really proud of yourself for accomplishing either today, this past weekend, or even just this new year. Awesome. You can share it out loud with your parent right now. Parents, you can share it with your child too if you're sitting side by side. Uh, but just thinking about the things that we're proud of, things that we can do, is a really great thing uh, for us to practice. Because sometimes we don't think of the things that we can do, we think of the things we can't do. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and how setting I can statements is really powerful and really great for your brain and really great for you to being able to have a positive outlook and growth mindset toward different skills that you want to practice and develop as you grow. One other thing we're going to do for downtime before we get into our emotions check-in is we're going to take two big rainbow breaths. So if you followed along with some smart, happy, strong kids segments before, uh, we do some deep breathing strategies. We have a great uh, episode on deep breathing strategies on the Sigma Free Society YouTube page. So one of my favorite breathing exercises that we're going to do right now is rainbow breathing. So you can still stand or stand. You can stand if you want, <laughs> but I'm going to say sitting down. Um, and again, just make sure your back is nice and tall. Bring your hands to your sides. And you're going to take a big deep breath in through your nose. And as you breathe in through your nose, you're going to bring your hands above your head into the shape of a rainbow. Okay, so we're going to do two together so you can follow along with me. So sit nice and tall or stand nice and tall if you decide to stand. And take a big deep breath in through your nose. Hold at the top. Exhale down. Awesome. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. So try to do your biggest breath of your day. Big inhale through your nose. You can even give yourself a big high five at the top. Exhale down. Wonderful job. Great work. Okay. So last time we were together, which was a couple weeks ago now, we did an emotions check-in called highs and lows. So last time we were together, my high of the day, something that made me feel really happy and positive was the sunny weather. Well, Today we didn't have any sunny weather, uh, so I can't put that as my high today, so I'm going to have to think of something different for today. And my low of the day was that my alarm didn't go off, so I felt kind of a little bit all over the place in terms of timing. So we're going to do the same emotions check-in for today. So I would love for you to think of your high, what was something that was really positive for you today, a high point of your day, and then maybe something that wasn't the best part of your day, a low, something that you didn't really enjoy, maybe something that made you feel down about yourself or maybe you just had a negative thought about, that could be something that you could write down for your low of the day. It's a great way for us to check in with ourselves by thinking about our highs and our lows for the day. When we think about our positives, we're thinking about things that have really made us feel optimistic and knowing the things that make us feel optimistic can help us find those things more in our day-to-day -day life. And then also thinking about the lows can help us think about obstacles that we may face in our everyday life and how we react to those obstacles and how we can actually find solutions to overcome those obstacles as well. So doing our highs and lows, really great practice. You can do this any time of the day, even at lunchtime, if, if you're at school and you kind of want to assess and self-reflect on how you're feeling that day. You can try this activity out. So just to conserve paper, I'm going to use the same uh, paper for my high and low for the day. But if you have paper or a marker, pencil, anything handy nearby, I would love for you to draw an arrow up, and that can be your high for the day section, and then an arrow down, and that can be your low for the day section. 
And I would love for you just to think of one thing that was really positive in your day and one thing that maybe wasn't so positive. So I will give you one minute to write that down, maybe brainstorm and think about that. If you don't have any paper or markers handy, if you're with a parent or if you're with a sibling, you're more than welcome to communicate and just talk to them. Talk to them about your high, talk to them about your low. If you don't want to write or draw, you're always welcome to speak and, and share it out loud too. That's still providing the same value as writing and drawing it down as well. Okay, so you're always welcome to kind of modify any activity you would do a little bit. So I'm going to cross off what I wrote last time. Okay, my high of the day connects to the weekend a little bit too. So if you find that you did something that was really boost your mood over the weekend, that carried into your Monday, that's awesome. I suggest you continue to do those things um, and you can write that down too. So even if it wasn't something specifically today, but you're still really excited about something that you did on the weekend, you can always write that down as your high of the day as well. Okay, I hope everyone had a chance to either share their high and their low uh, with the person next to them or a family member nearby. Um, or if you had a chance to write or draw it down, that is wonderful too. I'm just gonna share mine really quickly. Uh, my high for the day was weekend in nature. So I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time outside this weekend um, and uh, celebrate some birthday celebrations this weekend. So I had a great um, time doing that um, just walking around in nature getting getting outside for some hiking which was really really nice and then my low for the day I think because I just had such a good time in just being outside this weekend was rainy weather <laughs> it was really raining today I did manage to still go outside for a walk but in rain there's tons of different benefits as well um, but I would say sometimes the darkness of the rain can get a little bit on my mood, a little bit, <laughs> but it still doesn't stop me from going outside. So hopefully everyone else got a chance to go outside and play in the rain today too. So you're high and you're low. Think about that a little bit more, even if you want to take the time to brainstorm a little bit too. Okay, one other thing we talked about last time we were together, uh, we talked a little bit about, I'm just going to show you this picture again, the negativity bias. So we talked about how our brain has something called the negativity bias, and it is a survival technique that we are more likely to focus on the negatives of a situation than we are the positives of a situation. So to balance the scale, we realized in our last segment that we need at least five positives to outweigh one negative. So for example, if you did a presentation and you had five positive comments from your teacher and you saw one negative comment, your brain would probably focus more on that negative comment than all of the positive comments. And that is just an example of our negativity bias. That is normal. We all feel that way sometimes. We can, it's really easy for us to pick out the negatives than it is to pick out the positives. And so picking out the positives and having a positive mindset or even a growth mindset is something that takes a lot of practice. And one way you can practice having a gross mindset is through self-reflection. So just pretend you're right now, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, and I want you to think about what you would see. So of course you would see yourself, but what skills and qualities and characteristics would you see as well? So are you brave? Are you passionate? Are you empathetic? Are you resilient? Are you creative? What are some things that you can do? Now, sometimes it's hard for us to think about all the things we can do because I want you to raise your hand if you've ever said, I can't. I'm definitely putting my hand up for that because 
I've said that before for sure. Uh, lots of times. Um, still, even as an adult, I am still saying I can't do something. Uh, who said is I'm not good at that? Raise your hand if you said I'm not good at something. Me, for sure. <laughs> Especially in school when it came to math, I would always say I'm not good at that subject. I'm just, I'm not good at that. So I'd have a fixed mindset about that. I just wouldn't even want to do it because I just believed that I wasn't good at it. Um, maybe what's another one that you could say? Okay, raise your hand if you have said, I won't try that. So I won't try that. Yeah, I've said that too. Uh, so sometimes it's easier for us to say, I can't, I won't, I shouldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, and really thinking again about that negative, that's that negativity bias. But what I'm going to challenge you with today is really thinking about things you can do. And we're going to be doing self-reflection on I can statements. And I can statements are really powerful tools that you can use to help you boost your positive thinking. It can help you boost your growth mindset. And it can really help you think about the skills you already have as well as really brainstorm and self-reflect on the areas that you could improve on in the future. So even if you're not the best at something right now, that's okay. Um, even if you've made mistakes, lots of times I've made mistakes, and those are learning experiences, that's okay. Um, so just making sure that you're aware of, as you're building these skills, you know, you might make mistakes, you might not get it right away, and that is okay, but you can do certain things. And so thinking about the skills you already have can really help you boost that optimistic mindset and really help you think about how you want to continue to improve and build on your skills in the future. Also self-reflection and doing I can statements can really help you organize your passions and things that you're interested in. And it can really help you think of the different skills and hobbies that you might wanna try. So maybe you are really good at a certain skill or subject or sport, and maybe you want to try something else and build your skills in something else. So for our activity today, I'm going to be challenging you to think really positively about yourself. You're going to go against your brain's negativity bias, and you're going to think about all the skills that you can do, because I'm sure you can do lots of amazing things. And I've picked four categories that we're gonna be looking at together and really thinking about all of the things that you can do in those categories. So I will show you what those categories are and you'll need a paper and markers or pencil, pencil crayons, whatever you have handy. Again, if you don't have any of these materials nearby, you're more than welcome to share them out loud with a family member or even just yourself <laughs> as you do this exercise. So the four sections we are going to be focusing on today are creativity. So how are you creative? What are some things you can do with your creativity? We're going to be focusing on collaboration. What are some things you can do with other people? We're going to be looking at communication. What are some things you can do in communication and contribution? What are some things you can do to contribute to your society and your communities, such as school or at home? So what I would love for you to do is grab a piece of paper and you can split it into four different sections. And you can write creativity, collaboration, communication, and contribution in the boxes. And then we're just gonna do I can, just as a sentence starter. And you're more than welcome just to write one sentence if you'd like, or if you want to write and brainstorm all of the skills you have in that category, you're more than welcome to do that too. So I'm going to give everyone just 30 seconds to quickly split their page into four different sections. And then you can also jot down those categories that we're going to be focusing on. All right, and if you haven't had a chance to jot down everything on your paper, that's okay. You'll have time as we kind of go through each section. So we can start with box number one, creativity. Okay, I can. 
Now I want you to really self-reflect and think, what are all the things you can create? What are some things maybe you've built? Um, are you able to draw something that maybe is very challenging for other people? Uh, and what are some things that you can do with your creativity skills? So for example, maybe you can create solutions to problems. So that's one th example I'm gonna put down. You can create solutions. Maybe you're a really good problem solver. So maybe if any friends at any time have a problem or even if you have a problem or obstacle that you have to overcome, you can create creative solutions to your problem. You're innovating, you're able to adapt. Another thing for creativity, maybe you built an awesome 3D structure. Maybe you're able to draw. Maybe you can create an art, 3D art structure, or maybe you're able to do a really amazing art drawing that you've been practicing. So what can you create? What are some things that you can do in terms of creativity? And I want you to write them down in that box as well. Another thing that you could be learning right now in terms of creativity is create code. I know some students are learning coding at school or even just on your own, which is pretty cool. So maybe that could be something that you're doing right now in terms of creativity. So think, what can you do in terms of creativity? It can be a thing that you can actually do, um, or it can just be in terms of your creativity skills. What are some things that you feel that you're strong at? And you can write all those down in the box. Wonderful. Again, doesn't have to be full sentences, just a brainstorm. Any activity you do with me might look messy and it's just gonna be ideas out on a page and that is totally okay. Okay, the next one, collaboration. This is a really important skill that you can use anytime at home, you can use it at work, you can use it at uh, on a sports team, at school. So what are some ways that you collaborate with other people? How can you collaborate? So I can, my example here would be work well in a team. Maybe you really enjoy group work at school. Maybe that is something that you excel at working with other people. Maybe another thing you can do for collaboration is I can share and be kind. That's a really important one. Being kind to others, making sure that people in that you're collaborating with feel included and that you're being inclusive. Those are strong skills that you can write down for your I can statements as well. So think of all of the amazing ways you're able to collaborate with other people. And you can write that down in the box. Okay, the next one we're gonna focus on is communication. Another very important skill um, in terms of being able to share your ideas with other people. So maybe you're really good at verbal communication, you're really good at sharing and speaking about how you feel. Maybe you're really good, great at writing and sharing stories about how you feel. Maybe it is body language. Maybe you're really good at showing your emotions on your face. Or maybe you're really good at reading other people's communication too with their emotions as well. So maybe even if it's not you communicating your emotions, maybe you just have a really good intuition about how other people are feeling and you're empathetic towards other people and you try to communicate that through kindness, uh, being fair to others, different things like that too. It can be part of your I can statements. So for communication, some examples we could say, I can 
share my feelings with others. That's an important aspect of communication because sometimes it's really hard for us to communicate how we feel. So being able to communicate your feelings with others, if that's something that you feel that you can really do and you can do well, I would encourage you to write that down. And maybe you can think of other aspects that you can communicate with. Maybe you're really good at communicating with your friends and you're really capable of making sure that they feel safe and that they have you to confide in if they need anything at all. So how do you communicate? What are some things that you can do? Just give everyone a few seconds just to catch up. So the first box we did was creativity. Some things that you can do in terms of creativity and, and creating things. And that could also just be your passions. Maybe you're passionate about building. So anything that you can do in terms of creativity and innovation. I would love for you to brainstorm or write that down. The next thing is collaboration. How do you work with other people? What are some things you can do well with collaboration? And the last one we were just on is communication. How can you communicate effectively with other people? Are you able to share your feelings and ideas? And how can you do that? Write that down. And the last one, one of my favorite skills, one thing I think we should all children, youth, adults be thinking about is how can I contribute? Or how am I contribute? I can contribute in some ways. So thinking about con contribution in terms of the different communities you're involved with. So that could be at school, that could be at home, that could also be in your society, your local and global society. What are some ways that you can contribute? And what are some skills that you have that could make this world an even better place? So I can do what? What are some things that you can do? Well, one thing we can all do, I can volunteer. I can share my skills with, and you can even fill in the blank there. What are some things that you could share your skills with? So what are some ways that you can contribute, that you already are contributing? I can uh, help my teacher in the classroom. I can really use my skills in sports to help my friends learn a new skill. So some different ways that you are showing your contribution skills. I want you to really brainstorm about that. It can even be something that you can do more in your communities. So maybe you want to volunteer more in your local community, or maybe you want to volunteer or join a club at school. So what are some things you feel that you can do in terms of contribution and even giving back in big and small ways. That can even be, I can help my mom with dinner. I can help my dad with the dishes. Uh, it could be anything even at home that's helping build and contribute to your communities in any way. Okay, so let's recap. I want you to think of an I can statement for creativity. Collaboration, communication, and contribution. What are some things and skills that you already have in these areas? What are some things that you are already doing in these areas? And even self-reflecting a bit deeper on how you want to improve these skills is all a really great way to help you boost your growth mindset and help you really think positive about the skills and values you already have. So if you didn't get a chance to do this during this time, that's okay. This will be posted on the Stigma Free Society's face, or, um, YouTube page, and it will also be posted on their Facebook page after too. This lesson, you're more than welcome. And I encourage you all to practice I Can't Stay. Sneak in. More about the negative. 
I challenge you to think about the positive. So we're gonna end off with two more rainbow breaths. So we'll take a couple rainbow breaths and if anyone at the end here has any questions, feel free to type them in. Um, but we're gonna sit nice and tall or stand nice and tall. Take a big deep breath in through your nose. Exhale down. Awesome, big inhale up. Great, and we're gonna exhale with our hands on our head. And we're gonna say our mantra, I'm smart. And then you're gonna bring your hands to your heart and say, I'm happy. And you're gonna show me your muscles and you're gonna say, I'm strong. Awesome, we're gonna do that one more time. I'm smart, I'm happy, and I'm strong. Awesome job, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please connect with us if you did do this activity, we would love to see it. You can tag Sigma Free Society on Facebook, Instagram, and also Dolphin Kids Future Ready Leaders as well. And I will see you on Family Day. So we will be back on Monday, February 15th, and we'll be doing another activity for smart, happy, strong kids. And we hope you can join. So take care, have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, everyone.